Welcome to The Lock Shop with Nielsen and Hustler, powered by Coolback Canada. All right, it is 11 o'clock the day before the NHL trade deadline day. And uh, we got lots to discuss in the Lock Shop. Heavy, heavy hockey show today on the Lock Show with myself and Huss. Huss will be by shortly. We got to talk about this this Tyson fight as well with Jake Paul. I mean, we're going to have to get into that. That's like the only other thing I want to talk about today. We'll get an update on the Arnold Palmer Invitational leaderboard where uh, Willie Zalatoris was at three under, still at three under. Yeah, he was three under. He's already in the clubhouse. That was one of my picks yesterday. The picks yesterday, I do apologize. We had to get to the Henrique trade on the oil stream yesterday, so we did move along the lock shop rather quickly yesterday. Sam Burns, three under through 11 as well. That was another one of my picks, so a nice start for a couple of those guys. Hideki is five under. Russell Henley is five under. Those two guys still out on the track. Chris Kirk is four under through 14. Justin Lower is your leader. He's five under and already in the... Clubhouse. Richard Croft is in and says, a great night at the cashing out exclusives. Thanks, guys. JT Shark is in and says, all Jake Paul matches are fixed and mean nothing. I I mean, I do. I just, yeah, you're right. I mean, I hate them, but I, do, I am intrigued to see Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. I don't know why. It's sick. I'm sick. I don't even Like, I hate it, but I'll watch it. <laughs> so I don't know if that's how most people are going to be approaching this thing. Or what? But uh, yeah, we'll see how we'll see how it plays out. Uh, you can text us anytime if you're listening on TuneIn or at iHeart. Some of you uh, may be new to what we got going on here at Edmonton Sports Talk. The lineup is the same every single day. Um, we are rolling with the Nielsen Show from six to nine. The Hangout, which is always, I think, one of the best sports discussions in the city, every single day from nine to eleven. Myself and Huss from Winnipeg Sports Talk every single day from eleven to twelve, right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays. Today happens to be a Thursday. Um, we have two guys in the goalie at noon. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have Oil Stream. Oil Stream pregame is early today. It is three thirty. The pregame show right here on iHeart. Uh, you can listen on iHeartRadio, you can listen on TuneIn, and of course you can listen at EdmontonSportsTalk.com. JT Shark says, by the way, greeting from London, England. I like this. JT Shark, are you an Edmontonian that's like on vacation in London, England? Or are you just like an Oilers fan who found Edmonton Sports Talk, but you're permanently from London, England? I guess what I'm asking, JT Shark, is do you have an awesome accent? That's all I want to know. Let me know. Hit me up. Got to get the answer to that. Welcome to the Nasty Chat. You're going to find a lot of sports bets kicking around in here during the lock shop. we got a busy slate in the National Hockey League tonight. We will definitely get in to that one. Northside Sandwich is already in. It says, sprinkle on Tyson in that fight. Yeah, Tyson, Jake Paul. We'll get to it. Jake Bowen Moss is going to join us. Jake will be by uh, probably about 20, 25 minutes in on the lock shop today. We've got his thoughts. Uh, Edmondson, boy, the Maple Leafs are cornering the market on defensemen and aren't going to make an impact. Well done as they continue to pull the trigger on a couple of these deals. Um, we'll see how that continues to sort itself out. And uh, we'll keep tabs on everything going on around the NHL with the trade dead line today. Uh, but let's bring in Huss. Huss, what's going on, buddy? How you doing, man? <laughs> I just heard you talking about Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. What do you what do you think? What is this? You know, boxing boxing really did seem like it was coming back. Like it was like when I grew up, boxing was was big time. And again, you know, UFC was just in its infancy and was thought of more as a sideshow. Um, and boxing couldn't get out of their own way. They'd go for a long time without having, you know, the top guys. They'd all have their own belts, and they wouldn't fight each other. But we've gotten to this point where boxing is back and very legitimate. You've got some of the great champions of all time right now fighting, and yet the only time we really hear about it is when it's YouTubers. Shout out YouTubers. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to up in the ring at some point. <laughs> Nielsen um, fights us just for the yeah. card, you know, like <laughs> that's right. I'll be in, I'll be in your I'll be in your corner. You can go against one of the Fangs clan or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um <laughs> I mean, 
Jake Paul going up again. And, and I'll say this. He's actually looked like he's put a lot into, you know, training. He looks like he tries, right? Yeah. But, I mean, how can anyone take this seriously? Like, he fought he fought his last fight, first-round knockout. Ryan Borland. He'd yeah. had one fight in the last six years. The guy was a DoorDash driver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, professional fighter. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> So this business with Tyson, I mean, I don't know whether it's going to be one of these no knockout exhibitions or whether it's going to be like, I did see Tyson training maybe a year or two ago and it did actually look like he, uh, he could still knock someone's head off. He still looks like he moves well for a 57 year old. It sounds crazy, but I'm not sure he can put sentences together anymore, but he looks like he can still move. He's out there. He, uh, He's put a lot of substances into himself as well. I mean, he had Mike Tyson's one of the most interesting dudes of all time. I mean, since he was in jail and all that, you know, his legendary active fighting career, didn't he? He had like 60,000 pigeons at one point, and then he became. They had the cartoon. Uh, I remember watching the cartoon. <laughs> For sure. So, anyways, I don't know what to say other than. Jake, if you want people to take you seriously as a fighter, how about fighting an active guy that has actually fought in the last uh, the last 15 years? How about that? I am going to watch it, though. I said I hate it, but I'm going to watch it mostly because I want to see Tyson kind of kick his ass. <laughs> but I Well, everyone know. does. Yeah. I mean, it's part of the reason why Logan Paul is so good in WWE. Like he's yeah, how is he viewed in athlete. WWE? Like, do, is he a heel over there, or how does that work? Because yeah. he, oh, he yeah, looks yeah, like I he's mean, really good at it. I'm more intrigued by him than his brother boxing. Yeah, he. I mean, listen, in six months, he was basically as good as far as acrobatics and stuff, about 90%. Hey, Jake, can you uh, mute yourself? Um, we'll, um, yeah, the, uh, yeah, I would say, so Logan is – a guy like he's actually turned into an incredible athlete. You know how the arcs of wrestling goes at some point. Yeah. He'll be a good guy and a bad guy, but his association with Jake, the fact that so many people outside of their hardcore fan base can't stand these guys. He was a natural heel and he is certainly playing it up right now in, uh, in WWE. But uh, I, I, I didn't think that was real today. And actually I, I didn't think it was real boy. either. I didn't think it was real that, either. You know, there's no way I'm buying this fight. I've done this too many times for Tyson fights, but apparently it's going to be on TV. It's, it's on Netflix. Free. It, it, well, it's on Netflix. Oh, okay, Netflix. It's on Netflix. Yeah, it's on. It's on Netflix. So if you have a Netflix account, you'll be able to watch the fight. I think, unless there's like a charge within Netflix for it, but I think you just get to watch it if you have Netflix. So. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, JT Shark, who's listening from uh, England, as he laid out earlier in the chat today, says Jake Paul will pay off Tyson to take the mat. Man, I sure hope that's not the case. I sure hope Tyson doesn't take a fall just to like for money against Jake Paul. Like, well, I, I mean, I, just the uh, fact that he's fighting him. I mean, how I know how sad would that be? Iron Mike Tyson goes down arguably like that. Yeah, the greatest, most ferocious heavyweight champion of all time. I hope he comes out and puts Losing him down in 20 YouTuber seconds. Jake Paul. Yeah, like that can't, that can't be how the legacy ends, even if you view this in any way impacting his legacy. But uh, yeah, we had to get to that. To announce this morning, it'll be happening July 20th. And Huss, they're not messing around. Eh? Like they're doing it at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Yeah. AT&T. St and because it's Mike Tyson, that place will be packed, I think. I think it'll do insanely well. Oh. So. Listen, it is it is truly a spectacle, and uh, as I say, we'll be we'll unfortunately, I'm sure, be talking about it more than we should as we get closer to the fight, I know. and there'll be all sorts of funny stuff. But I mean, Tyson draws a lot of eyeballs. I mean, so does Jake amongst his. Yeah, he does. I mean, he's fans. got the following. That's why he keeps doing this. Yeah, he, obviously, no, no, for uh, for sure. I uh, yeah, I will say, get, like for my just quickly unboxing one more unboxing, like my peak would have been Tyson Holyfield. Like, that's, that's when I, you know, the early Tyson, I was too young. Tyson Holyfield was my, was my wheelhouse. Lennox Lewis. Like, and that was good. I really enjoyed it at the time. It was really fun. I like that. Yeah, so. the infamous ear-biting. The ear-biting incident. Set, set, that, uh, set that sport back, uh, back a few years as well. I was, my dad was always a big boxing guy. Okay. And uh, I remember as a kid winning tickets on some radio station to go see the Tyson Spinks fight. 
uh, when Michael Spinks was the champ. And it started, and 91 seconds later, it was over. It was the uh, that was the original, like for pay per view, you couldn't get it on your TV. Like you had to go to a place and they'd set up the chairs. Yeah, and they had the to big go sit and watch. And that was like, uh, I think that's what they did for like the first few WrestleManias. Like, you know, if you uh, live on pay per view, look for a location in your area to go <laughs> and uh, you put it on. So, anyways, it's uh, it's wild, but hey, uh, what's the uh, how was the show this morning? What uh, what are people saying about the what? big move yesterday by Ken Holland? I'm going to flip this around to you quickly and ask you, being in a Canadian market, what do you think the show was like today, Huss? Um, hmm. Well, considering the majority of Canadian fans are very rational <laughs> and well thought out, um, not impatient and not expecting the world. I'm thinking that it was uh, 90% people losing their minds. Like, that's it? That's all we're doing? Nailed it! Nailed it! Am I close? Yeah, you're close. I mean, they, they, they end up bringing these guys in. I mean, Henrique, they get at 25%, 75% retained. Yeah, they had to move a first out. I One of my hot takes today on Skull Hot Takes was, where was it? I thought I had my take list around here, but it was basically... The only the the only reason the only reason people get fired up about Canadian teams moving first round picks is so that they can't sit around and criticize how they wasted the pick on whoever they drafted. You know what I mean? Like nobody's ever happy with a first round pick. It's like, well, I would have drafted somebody better. Oh, but then you trade the pick because you're a contender. It's like, well, should have kept it just so you complain about the guy they drafted twenty eight. Like, come on, uh, you when you're a contender, you move firsts to add pieces. That's what the others have done. Now, today, we had Gazdik on. He thinks Henrik would be a great third-line center. Henrik loves to play the wing. Today, they have him on the wing with Leon Dreisel and Levander Kane. And that has okay. allowed them to put Nuge back with McDavid, which makes sense. I mean, he plays the wing. He can play the wing. They're going to put him on the wing and kind of complete their top six, at least to start. Carrick was a nice pickup. Oilers' fourth line is a black hole. Um, he'll be an upgrade there. Uh, so, I, I like the deal. There was a lot of reaction. It was like, this is not the right winger that they were looking for. So it's a failure. They didn't get a defenseman, which they still have time to do. We had uh, we had Hart Levine on from Puckpedia this morning. And they they loaned down Dylan Holloway. They sent him down to Baco on a loan. Uh, so they could still add a player prior to the deadline that makes up to $2.1 bucks. And if you can go out and have them retain 50%, you can get a guy who makes 4 mil. And as Hart said today, you know, if you can pull off the old 75% retention, you go trade for a guy who makes 8 million bucks. So the Edmonton Oilers could still go out and make another deal. Ken Holland's leading everybody to believe that it'll be just a depth defenseman coming here at some point, which they desperately need. I'd suggest they need something more than just a depth defenseman, but there'll still be more coming. But you know how it is. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure you must have had messages after the Monaghan thing, and people are like, let's just wait another four weeks to see what the team looks like after the deadline. We had to wait about 48 hours until the deadline oh. after the trade yesterday. So we'll see how it sorts out, but mixed results. The same people that hated the Monaghan edition and said, I can't believe the Jets went and traded their first round pick. And then the guy goes and scores eight goals in eight games and completely turns around the power play are now losing their mind that there have been other trades and that the Jets haven't made another deal yet. I mean, as far as the Jets, it sounds like they're kicking tires on some of these uh, more significant wingers. I think the consensus around here is that Tyler Toffoli <coughs> would be a perfect acquisition. Oh boy. We did get into a big talk about Buchnevich yesterday. You did. Um, but I mean, the cost of Buchnevich is significant. And, you know, it was interesting. We kind of said, well, what, how would you feel for everyone that's so horny for Buchnevich? I mean, it's going to cost. They don't have their first round pick this year. How would you feel if Cole Perfetti was in that package? Oh. Um, and then it got a little less lukewarm, although a lot of people still said that they would do it. I mean, again, because he's got a second year of term and the potential of doing it with um, uh, with salary retention for St. Louis, which would get him under three hundred or uh, three million dollars. So I got to tell you, it's uh, it is interesting. But man, there were some big deals after we finished up. I mean, the Edmonton Oilers made their moves, but I mean that one hour with the uh, I, I'm interested in your thoughts on Colorado. Um, yeah. I did not have Bowen Byram getting traded yesterday on my list, but uh, I mean, that was the maybe the coolest trade of it all. A one-for-one, straight-up hockey deal, if you will, 
with Casey Middlestat going to the Avalanche and Bowen Byram going to uh, to Buffalo. I have to think there's more to come for Buffalo because I mean they've got you know, arguably the most stacked left side with Byram. Who's Byram's kind of Byram's their three the basically, right? Like yeah, and then Owen Power and Rasmus Dahlin, both number one overall draft picks. I. Uh... Yeah, yesterday was wild because we wrapped Lock Shop early because of the Breaking Henrique trade, and then we went late on the oil stream, so we must have rolled oil stream for about an hour and a half, hour 40 minutes yesterday, and the trades just kept coming. It's like we were hosting the Friday deadline show. Like, it all just sort of rolled out over that stretch because when we started, the Tarasenko deal was done, and the Henrique deal had just started to come down, and then Colorado pulls the trigger on their two deals as well. And obviously, Colorado had a few things cooking here and decided to make the switch. Johansson is out. Middlestad is in in these separate deals. And then they bring in Sean Walker and move a bow and buy room. We ended up tracking down Jamie McLennan for the last part of the old stream yesterday, and he was kind of a little rattled by that one. He goes, I was really surprised at the one for one. I mean, Middlestad took forever to sort of pop and he popped last year, and he's having another pretty good year again this year. Buffalo's trading for a guy who plays at a position that they're already very strong at. If Byram does eventually become the player that people expect him to become, I think it's a real nice deal for the Buffalo Sabres, but we know he's had he's had some issues in Colorado so far, so I think it's a fresh start for Byram, which he probably, probably wanted at this point. I'll be interested because they cleared off some additional cap space here yesterday, Colorado, right? So Colorado, Colorado can't be done. Winnipeg can't be done. Edmonton's still looking to add. Vegas apparently isn't done, and they go and get Hannafin last night. Vancouver has been linked to a couple of decent-sized names still. This arms race in the West right now, buddy, is highly entertaining, and I'm loving every minute yeah. of it. Yeah, Vegas, Vegas are back at it. Um, <laughs> Mantha and now Hannafin. And, uh, oh, we've got some breaking news out of Vegas. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, what do Vegas we got? Golden Knight, Vegas Golden Knights have just announced that uh, Alec Martinez has passed away and is uh, going straight to LTIR. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. No one's passed away. But <laughs> you had me for it. You had me. You're like this. I'm like, whoa, what? Holy shit. And then you, and then, okay. Yeah, funny. <laughs> funny. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, there's like, oh, they might think of putting him on LTIR, and there were all the hilarious, uh, hilarious memes after that of like WWE when Stone Cold Steve Austin went into the hospital yeah. and started beating the hell out of Vince McMahon, and they had Kelly McCrimmon's face on Stone Cold and Martinez there. Like, I, I mean, hey, you know what? Credit to them for going for it, and I mean, that all goes to their owner. I mean, Bill Foley. I mean, knowing Gary as well as I do, and kind of you know talking with the guys, especially coming out of their championship last year he uh he is all about living in the now and doing everything everything they can future be damned to every win. time um, every year right yep and listen they do have the benefit of uh, having a lot of things going their way when it comes to players wanting to play there and uh you know being able to sign free agents and whatnot um but they very quickly went from a team that was planning on getting all these first round picks and building through the draft Later on that first year, they were moving guys out and said, hey, we're going to try and make a run for the Stanley Cup. And they went all the way, uh, you know, went to the final their first year. And they haven't let up since then, which a lot of people thought they would, but they haven't. They continue to roll along. Hannafin's a good get for again, man. Like Vegas, the blue line last year with Vegas was so tough to get through. And they, they obviously see what was the key to success last year and are ready to double down on it again. And I think the league will probably implode if they get Buchnevich or they get Gensel as well. Like Twitter is going to be insane if that happens. Well, and, and what will be even more and like for the record, I mean, I've heard that Mark stone, I believe. Um, and again, this isn't any inside information, but things that have been reported, they believed he had a lacerated spleen. Like a lacerated spleen is an injury that your recovery is three to six months. So part of the reason why I think they might be so aggressive right now is they know that Mark Stone isn't coming back. But if all of a sudden through some miracle in the first round, Mark Stone's back in addition to these guys that they got got in, well, put it this way, there'll probably be maybe a few more teams that'll be going, wait, what, wait a second. This is clear cap circumvention. 
Um, although right now, I don't really believe it is. I think they're just being really aggressive and uh, using what's available to them. So, you know what? Good for them. Do you think the Kings hop in on this at some point? Well, they made a couple moves yesterday, put a couple guys on waivers. It did seem like they were getting ready to make some sort of a move. I mean, they made that huge deal last summer with the Jets, and, you know, they uh, they have been very up and down, just to, to say the least. And PLD, I think, is sort of playing a, a third-line role. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we, you know, we will see. I I would be surprised now that the Kings are back in the playoffs. I think they probably try and do something. Um, I do wonder how much they uh, they have. We should pull up uh, pull up cap friendly here. Well, it's all just recent trades. Lots well, of trades. Lots of trades. And then, well, Joel have to, uh, uh, Jake will have to come in. I'm interested as to what the. Uh, what the word is in TO about the uh, the Edmondson uh, Edmondson acquisition? Uh yeah. Well, we can uh, we can bring in. Uh, let's bring in Jake. Let's see. Make sure Jake. Hey Jake, what's going on, buddy? How are you there? Hey, hey sorry there boys. Uh, no. Didn't mean to get in there. That was my bad. I was coming on just to listen, <laughs> and then I was yelling at my roommate. Where <laughs> Geo's Geo's headed to Robina Island. We think. Who knows? Anyways, now um, yeah, Edmondson. I, I heard you guys just talking about it. Um, can't teach six five, gentlemen. Can't teach six five. So. <laughs> you can't <laughs> teach. Uh, that, here. That's pretty much how people have described Edmondson uh, for about three years now. I think can't teach size, and I guess they needed they, it. AJ, eh, is that the key here? Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to have, but it's not like it's not a piece that. We're drooling over by any means as you know toronto sports fans um i'd say you know there's probably i don't know i, I don't like to get my hopes up for things because I, I know how that ends i imagine there's going to be at least one or two more moves uh before friday um but i don't know how impactful they're going to be toronto uh, you know they haven't been amazing as of late they haven't been awful you know some people believe that you know, the team on the ice can do it. I'm a little skeptical. I don't know. Someone's got to come out of the East. Someone's got to come out of the West. I, the more moves that the West keeps making is better for Leafs fans, I think, because the less guys that Boston yeah. and Tampa are getting, the better, I'd say. Florida is still a wagon. Um, but, you know, you got to beat you got to beat the best to be the best. So we'll see what happens. I, I, I'm not too excited about Edmondson, but, you know, Labushin came in. He said – Three really good games um, for what some people pinned as the worst defenseman in the entire NHL. Uh, he, he certainly hasn't looked that way over his first three with the Leafs here. So, um, you know, you can you can look a lot worse on bad teams. I'd say um, you get on a little bit, you get a better partner, you get on a better team, and all of a sudden, and a little bit of life, and all of a sudden, your game might change up a little bit. So, you know, we got some size in the back end. I don't know if it's how it's going to, you know, I'm sure Edmondson's getting a suspension come playoff time. I can probably <laughs> guarantee that. I can probably guarantee it. We've seen it happen. We've seen it happen. The least so, fans so already good. calling for the Edmondson suspension at some point in the oh, postseason. you should see the, one of the tweets I saw. It was like, I cannot oh, wait. Yeah. They're, like, they're like, find a way to get Edmondson in the lineup tonight so he can so he can injure some uh, Bruins and serve his suspensions early. I, I saw someone <laughs> tweeted that. It was not me. Not me. <laughs> The uh, Leafs do have go ahead. Leafs do have their first round pick. I'm uh, which is interesting. They still have their 2024 first. They don't they don't have a 2025 pick until the fifth round right now. So at that point, you know, when you know you've got nothing next year, I mean, do you almost put it in and try and make something happen where you get a guy maybe even with term for this year and next year? So you don't have to worry about the next year rental, yeah. Situation. Yeah, that wouldn't yeah, listen, make sense. I, I, I'm all in for trading picks. I think picks are just like, to me, they're just like, I know they like the early picks matter a lot more like trading a third and a fifth means nothing to me. I don't know why people are like, Oh my God, what an overpay. So you don't even know what those are. A third and a fifth. What is like, what is that? It's nothing. I can understand why tree Living's a little hesitant to trade some of the actual future guys that are already on like with the Leafs, you know, a Cowan, a Minton, I think Nye's name has been thrown around. 
Robertson, if they make another trade, a bigger trade, I imagine he would probably be in that package. He seems like the odd man out at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, when people are like, oh my God, I can't believe they sent a third and a fifth for Emerson. It's like, who cares? That is, that means absolutely nothing to a team that's trying to win right now. It's 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 shocking to me how, how much people value picks. I can understand first, second round picks. Anything after that is is fugazi to me. It's nothing. There's there's no doubt about it. I mean, if you look at the uh, the hit rate of those picks, and I know they call them lottery tickets. I mean, first round picks for sure, currency of star players in the National Hockey League. Second rounders, there's lots of good players that'll come out of the second round, but far from a guarantee. Yeah, there's lots that don't. Right? There's lots that never oh, come out. So, right. and then you sort of you you move past it, but um. It's the it's the first rounders right now that is interesting, and I mean, of course, Dusty. You know, we saw the Oilers f uh, first rounder as number four on the trade bait board. We knew Ken Holland was willing to uh, willing to move it. Well, I, I I like it because I think Henrique was number three, and the Oilers first was number four. And I just imagine Ken Holland calling and being like, "Listen, Henrique's number three on the trade bait board. The pick is four. What do you think? Should we just flip them? <laughs> Should we just flip them? I brought it up this morning. I haven't researched it yet." But I'd be interested to know how many of the last 10 Stanley Cup champions won a cup and also had their first round pick that year. You know what I mean? Most of the time, it seems like those things are fat sacrificed along the way to build a champion. I'd like to, it wouldn't take a lot. I just have to find some free time and quickly dive into that because I'd be interested to well, see. Well, listen, I mean, a lot of Stanley Cup champs, but a lot of other teams also blow their first round pick. Yeah, yeah, and then exactly go out early and uh, have nothing to show for it and sets them back. I mean, it is funny. And we did that a little bit, a couple weeks, a couple uh, days ago, going back to like the 2022 deadline and looking at all the trades that were made and how many of them really had a positive impact and how many were either gross overpays or swings that didn't do much that ended up costing them in the long run later on. So um, there, there will be mistakes made. There's no doubt about that. And at the end, there's only one team holding up the Stanley Cup at the end of it. But it doesn't make these next, whatever, 26 hours any less fun for uh, for hockey fans. And we know that, uh, I mean, I would include us in that group as well. But certainly, James Duthie and the crew just grimacing every time one of these guys gets taken <laughs> off the board, especially yesterday. Well, what's interesting is that, you know, I was thinking about that today with those guys in that show. And and you like tomorrow here on Edmonton Sports. Haas, what are you doing tomorrow? Four hours, Winnipeg Sports Talk. What, what's the plan tomorrow for you guys? Lay that out for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're rocking live at eleven our time and uh, rolling right through until well three. I guess two o'clock our time is the deadline, so we'll go until three. See if anything trickles in. We'll do marbles. We did buy a, a hobby box of uh, Upper Deck Series 2. So if there's no trades, we'll uh, crack some packs on the air. Yeah, brilliant brilliant yeah, idea. I cracked six of those oh. last night. Crack pack card breaks. Didn't get a single oh, Bedard. Did? Yeah, I didn't get a single Bedard card. Unbelievable. Um, wow. But uh, I got six more. I had a case. So I got six more that we'll do tomorrow night. And there's got to be one in there. So somebody's going to hit a Bedard tomorrow night over at the crack pack on Facebook. So. Well, you would, you would certainly yeah. hope so. I know uh, the uh, Earl of Eli, uh, very well, Earl comes in and in, uh, in our chat as well, or I guess Dan Asham. And to see the run that that dude had yesterday, Earl of Eli, five, yeah. five young guns is, is, in a case. Is, is that what, is that what happened? He finished with, he, he finished with five. He finished with five. Yeah. Is that, uh, he, who had that one? He, All right. Did you tweet it out? Okay, there we go. Troy Stetcher's Troy Stetcher's been traded to uh, to Edmonton. Just oh, wow. uh, just uh, just moving right now. Instant reaction, Dusty. Well, let's let's see. What do you think? Well, I'll, I'll be I'll Troy be honest. Stetcher. I was I know I know this is going to move the needle here as uh, as well. Um, they were going to go out and get a, a veteran defenseman. So I guess I didn't think they'd make another move on game day. I thought they would probably wait until tomorrow. Stature, 29 years old, 47 games with the Coyotes this year. This isn't going to move the needle much in town, and it's going to be hilarious. So uh, with that being said, still got room to do more if they want it. 
So we'll see how that sorts it out. But I was I was going to say, like, the, the deadline day coverage, my original point here was, like, tomorrow we're going Nielsen show 6 to 9, hang out 9 to 11, and then oil stream's going to run from 11 in the morning until 2. And it, it could be slow, but we have the interaction with listeners, right? Like, on oh, yeah. YouTube, we have the chat. We have our text line, which is just, I mean, it took an all-time pounding this morning. Like, people were all over it. We have we have that interaction, right? Those guys are just sitting there going back and forth on a panel and to the odd interview. Like it's completely it's a completely different monster. Brought you I brought you guys back to early November in oil country today on the text line? Uh yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was it was like that. It was like that today for sure. So the Oilers are uh, getting Troy Stetcher. Uh we'll have more on that. Two guys in a goalie coming up myself, Cass and uh Gager. More of a minor move, but uh we'll see. Uh, he has played in 47 games with the Coyotes so far this season. You know, it's just staying with the de- trade deadline here for a second here. Jake, I'll ask you, Jake. So far, with the work that's been done, who has impressed you the most? You like what Colorado did, flipping things around? Florida getting Tarasenko on a sweet deal? Oiler, the Vegas Golden Knights have got Hannafin. What stands out the most for you? I think Vegas has made probably the biggest splash in my mind. I think Hannafin was a was a nice move. Listen, people are online, and, I, and I'm sure there's a ton of Edmonton fans that feel this way, and I totally get it. Um, people aren't happy about the way you can, you know, circumvent the cap, and uh, this stone on LTIR is a, is a big talking point. Uh, I've seen a lot of a lot of jokes about him. You know, the day one of the playoffs, uh, all of a sudden being healthy, but. You know, they found a way to do this. Every deadline, they seem to make some sort of splash to make their team better. They won a Stanley Cup last year. And, you know, they're setting themselves up uh, to do it again, to go on another nice run. So, you know, Mantha was kind of a quiet one, uh, you know, a depth guy more than anything, middle six. Uh, and then you go get Hannafin. They're still in talks apparently about Gensel. That would be frustrating, I imagine, for a lot of people if they picked him up as well. Um I think Vegas for me right now is the one. I, it's funny. Yesterday, Huss, Vegas hadn't done any of these moves yet. You guys were making jokes that the you know the Tarasenko trade should have never been allowed to go through because that was you know they're only getting better for Florida. They really didn't have to give up much. But I think you guys also talked about the fact that you know he had a full no move and it was really his decision on where he was going to end up uh, at the deadline. But I think Vegas is just they're only getting better. And then if the stone. If the stone stuff is true and he's back healthy for the start of the playoffs, that's just going to frustrate people that much more. I don't. They got to fix this gap situation, right? I don't. I don't think he's going to be, which yeah, is very rich coming from Leaf Nation. I will just say that for for the record, that was uh, Dubis was known to uh, try to dance around the uh, around the fine line of uh, of the <laughs> rules as well. And the funniest thing is, is this all goes back to Tampa. Tampa was the one that really did it with Kucherov, and if you recall, after I want to say 2015, the Lightning went to the Board of Governors and put forward a motion to sort of fix this, saying a team could only go X amount, I think it was $5 million over the cap in the playoffs, and got no support from any of the other teams in the NHL. So they said, okay, no problem. We'll just do it ourselves. And, uh, as I say, I, I, I'm not sure that Mark Stone is, is coming back. If he does come back, though, people are going to be very, very hot about the whole thing. Hey, just, I mean, we you mentioned the Tarasenko trade, and that was so underwhelming uh, return, like a third and a fourth or something like that for a guy, you know, when we're seeing. I mean, basically, the, the price that the Oilers paid for Edmondson. Um, Tarasenko's, Dusty, you just mentioned, you know, skating on the top line, on the top team right now in the National Hockey League. What do we think about Calgary? So Calgary has traded, if you include the end of last year, to Foley, Zadarov, Lindholm, Tanev, Hannafin. They've got two firsts, a second, four thirds, a fourth, a fifth, Sharon Govich, Kuzmenko, Grushnikov, Yumo, Miramanov, and Bristowitz. One third can become a second. One fourth can become a third. Like, I'm not sure that people in Calgary, like there was so much made of like the full team retool and rebuild as to what was going to happen when they traded all these players. 
Um, I got to say it's a little underwhelming. And Ottawa hasn't done much either, and that's a team that really does, I think, need to make some significant moves. Maybe those are more off-season moves, but there is opportunity when you're out right now knowing you're going to be changing things to uh, to jump on it. And those teams have been sort of quiet the other way. Again, there's still time. I don't want to end up like some of these people freaking out on uh, online as if the deadline has already passed because we've seen there's a lot that happens on the day of. Um, but I don't know. If I was a Flames fan, I probably would have been hoping for uh, a more significant return when you think about the talent that they've shipped out over the last little while. You can text us anytime, 780-218-9999, 780-218-9999. It is the lock shop right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. The Edmonton Oilers apparently have acquired Troy Stetcher. Uh, Stoff saying it's likely for a mid-round pick. We'll have full reaction to that, obviously, with two guys and a goalie coming up with myself, Joaquin Gage and Matt Cassie. And today, you, of course, can uh, fire us your thoughts here. Just It's the day before deadline day. We do have a full slate in the National Hockey league tonight that we will certainly get to one more on the trade deadline here and i don't know if stetcher means that the Oilers are done 1.1 million dollar cap hit so they could still add another million dollar piece i'm not sure if there's been retention on this deal yet either um so we'll see there they could they could have i mean if the coyotes kept some of it, it leaves you a little bit more space to maybe go out and add another forward if you uh, want to, RCN is in and says Stetcher is a good 6-7 D-man ad. It's a guy that I think you can uh, put into the lineup if need be, if a CC or a DeHarnay are struggling. So we'll continue to get this conversation going on two guys in goalie today. Um, but, Jake, which team between now and the deadline in 25 and a half hours? And, you, you know, you mentioned you think the Leafs are going to do a little bit more something. Um which team do you expect to kind of steal the spotlight in the next one day? It's a good question. Um, I think my brain, um, and because of the, you know what I've seen in the past, I wouldn't be shocked if it's the Boston Bruins or Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, Seems like a Bruins thing to do, that, right? Yeah. Right? They've been pretty, I'd say fairly quiet, right? But... You know, I heard some rumblings earlier in the week that maybe it was Elias Lindholm all of a sudden getting flipped from Vancouver to Boston and a deal. I forget how it all. How it was it, all it was a three way deal that re, that Weeks put up. Jake it was DeBrusque. a three way deal where Lindholm Lindholm went from uh, Vancouver to Boston. DeBrusque went from Boston to Pittsburgh, and Gensel went from Pittsburgh to Vancouver. <laughs> Right. So that something, would be wild. A three yeah, way be, deal, bring it on. Don't be shocked if Boston's in on, you know, somebody, maybe a name that we haven't even talked about. Um, Tampa. That that is also my negative brain saying, you know, like those are the two Leafs kind of main rivals. Uh, you know, as of late, um, we, we can say. And um yeah, I think those are the two teams that I expect to make moves. Um, thinking about the West. I feel like Vegas is close to done. Um, I'm sure I, I wouldn't be surprised if Edmonton makes, you know, another move here or there. It's an interesting one, right? I, Nashville, I think, made a move today. So, you know, they're they're kind of gearing up here, um, you know, with how hot they've been. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, Vancouver is supposed to add Kessel, I think, today. Yeah, it looks like you he's going to be trade, signed. But- yeah. That, how much that matters you know it's just so many so many weird things going on doesn't it feel like a crazy like last two or three days we've had here it's been great well, yeah and so much of the stuff has happened before i mean that really cool uh, byron for middle stat deal yesterday like i'm actually looking at teams like buffalo like ottawa that are out right now potentially maybe looking at i mean this is best case scenario more deals like the byron for middle stat trade to really significantly shake up theirs we certainly expect the Jets. I see Mark A in the chat saying it's over under one and a half trades for the Jets before the deadline. I think they'll probably make a couple. How significant they are, I guess, remains to be seen. But there have been some other teams that have been somewhat quiet. Like the Carolina Hurricanes never seemingly get in the mix. They've been swept twice in the uh, conference finals or maybe three times now. At a certain point, you wouldn't be surprised if they went and uh, made uh, made something happen. Uh, and then the Pittsburgh Penguins. I mean, to me, it's your old buddy Dubas. I mean, 
What do they do with Gensel? What do they get for him? And are there other dominoes that fall for them after the Gensel deal is made? Yeah, people love, uh, there's still so many, uh, they're calling them Dubasites. Still so many here in the Toronto area, people who, you know, you know what? Last year's deadline was was pretty great. He, he made a lot of a lot of moves that people loved. Uh, the Ryan O'Reilly move, Shen. You know those guys didn't end up sticking around, but McCabe um, was a nice piece, and he's been a great uh, great member of that back end. But you know people people don't want to talk about the fact that I'm pretty sure he traded a first round pick for Nick Foligno a few years back. Didn't really pan out. Um, you know, not every not every. Uh, trade as a winner and but it, when people are dubas fans that's what they think they think everything he does is gold and i don't know i think it's a little bit of a delusion I'm not saying that i'm a tree living guy by any means but i just think you know dubas isn't this um almighty powerful i i, <laughs> I remember the, the the breakup uh fondly and you know i uh, i'm pretty content with uh with what's going on in leafland considering you know we got an extension done for nylander this year um Marner up up next and Tavares likely coming off the books next year. Hey, um, there was, uh, by the way, Splitty Rooney in chat, uh, has said cup winners the last 10 years. Yeah, thanks for that. that held, held on to their first round pick Vegas in 2023, Washington in 2018 and the Kings in 2014. And, uh, just in the last few minutes, Brandon Duhame going from the wild to the Colorado Avalanche. So the Avalanche mm. making another pickup. I mean, Duhame's a more of a depth piece, but uh be interesting to see that deal I've also made within the uh, within the division, which you don't see uh, very, uh, very often. And also seeing, just on follow-up on that, Oilers and Stetcher, um, fourth rounder being reported for uh, for Stetcher for the Oilers. So I think that probably... fourth rounder. I think that probably comes with some retention because fourth rounder's for retention. I mean, that's what happens. So... Um, we'll get more on that uh, fourth rounder for uh, for Stetcher as a rental. Your reaction, uh, of course, you can text us 780-218-9999 here on Edmonton Sports Talk. We'll dive into that trade and what the Oilers still need to accomplish prior to the deadline tomorrow. Coming up on two guys in a goalie with myself, Cass, and Joaquin Gage. And we'll monitor these trade situation, but this is the lock shop. And uh, it's a full slate in the National Hockey League tonight, boys. So, Hustle, you got about 10 minutes before you got a jet, so let's dive into this. By the way, the EST parlay for the Oilers and Blue Jackets. The Oilers do have a uh, do have a game tonight um, that is already up. You can get it right now. Connor McDavid, two plus assists. Henrik with a point in his debut, and the Oilers to win in regulation plus five fifty tonight. That's plus five fifty. It's already up over at CoolBet.com. McDavid with two plus assists. Henrik with a point. Oilers win in reg tonight plus five fifty. What else you seeing out there, Hus? Well, I'm seeing somebody in chat saying, uh, "What are we nuts?" Uh, Hyman anytime goal, even money. That's Duck Dad. Foolish not to play it. Um, maybe we'll jump in on that. I mean, as far as the games that I like, I mean, just for outrights, like I do wonder, and again, maybe I'm so pot committed on this with Calgary. Um, <laughs> like that five-game winning streak was not good. I was happy they lost. I mean, I need them under 87 and a half points, so, uh, or 86 <laughs> and a half. So basically four games above 500. They were 500, then they got to that point. But now they've traded all their guys. Like, what becomes of that team? It is weird. I mean, I, I kind of assumed that Tampa would be more than a minus 159 favorite at home against Calgary, um, especially with, you know, losing now Hannafin on top of the other guys that they left. Um, so I'm, I'm liking Tampa at minus 159. I still think the Wild are pushing and playing really hard and the coyotes are well the coyotes i don't mind the wild at mullet at minus 142 and listen i know the i know uh vegas made these big deals um and you you get hannafin in and you get anthony math i'm not sure that clicks right away they've been terrible lately uh and i think you've got a very motivated vancouver canucks team going in there i like the canucks as an underdog tonight in vegas at minus 101 um the other game that is, I mean, basically a significant favorite. And maybe we think about the puck line because they seem to hit it each and every night, but is the Panthers at home to the Flyers. I mean, it's minus 233 on the money line, so probably not something I normally put in. Uh, but those are the games that sort of intrigue me right now. 
Um, I'm staying away from this Washington Pittsburgh yeah. game. Both of them sellers right now. I don't really know. Although Sid himself is probably not even paying attention to any of this out. He just wants to go out and win a hockey game and stay in the mix. So, uh, but those are the ones that uh, that uh, I'm sort of liking right now and leaning towards money line wagers. What about you? Uh, well, Jake, let's go to you, buddy. What are you uh, What are you looking at tonight? Yeah, I mean, I won't do it, but Boston Bruins minus one forty seven uh, for those. For those uh, non-fans of the Leafs out there, um, I don't know. The Leafs are clearly clearly have a Boston problem. I think they've lost five or six in a row now to the Bruins. Um, and every single a learning lesson, if you guys are wondering. Every time they lose to the Bruins, they've learned a new lesson. Well, guess what? <laughs> They're not getting any smarter. So um, keep an eye on that one. Bruins minus 147 on the money line. I'm a fool. I, I, last time I bet against the Sabres, they crushed us. 7 nothing Kings. I, I'll do it again. I don't mind the Preds, uh, either money line or, or in reg, depending on what we're going to do in terms of a parlay. Uh, I know they had that rough bounce for you guys uh, earlier in the week, I think against Montreal. But yeah. I don't know if you saw that one goal Montreal scored. So yeah. bank it off the glass. Like, I, I still think the Preds you know, are, are motivated. The Sabres just lost their top uh, point getter uh, in middle stat. Uh, I, I, it's going to be back up tonight on a back to back. Played the Leafs. Uh, now got to go to Nashville from Toronto to Nashville. So um, I don't mind the Preds. And, you know, Hus kind of hit on a few that I liked as well. Uh, I don't mind Tampa, Mini, uh, even the Canucks in Vegas. I don't mind. So, yeah, a lot of good options out there. I mean, if we can figure out what you I'm in on the Bruins. Try to throw something together. I'm. Yeah, well, I I, I, like, I really like Nashville. Nashville was going to be the ones that I was going to go to. Nashville in regulation. Uh, I definitely like that one tonight. I also like the Los Angeles Kings in regulation. Ottawa has lost five games in a row. The Los Angeles Kings' most recent losses have been to the better teams in the West, Vancouver, Calgary, and Edmonton, and then Nashville are part of that red hot stretch. So I do like the Los Angeles Kings tonight. If we were going to put it into, a, if we're going to put the Kings in to a parlay, um, it's minus one ninety four. Not a great number uh, in regulation. It's much better. It's going to slide down to a minus one nineteen in regulation. But uh, I like the Nashville play. I like the Kings. Huss, you know, I'm always going to ride with you on the Flyers on a puck line against Philly. Um, Huss, what do you think? What do you? What comes together here? Well, I mean, if we uh, where are you at the, the, the uh, on the Canucks because we're both kind of liking the Canucks. Yeah, no, I I'm I'm, I'm okay with the Canucks. I'm okay with the Canucks on a parlay. Yeah, they're really good well, really good value there for sure. So, I mean, if we took Vancouver and we took Boston, um we could slide in Well, I mean, geez, we've got a bunch of options here. Tampa at minus 159 again money line I think is um you know, and again, they're they're desperate right now. They're holding on to that spot right now. They're not really safe. Um, and then, I, I mean, well, those five teams on the money line, not that we're going to do a five-gamer, is basically 12 to 1. We take out the Kings and just go with the Predators, it's minus 175, or sorry, plus 756. If we put the Kings on it, it's plus 725. Tampa, Vancouver, Boston, L.A. We, we usually we, don't go that high, do we? We usually don't. Or we just go with the ones that are going to get us a better number. Tampa, Vancouver, Boston, plus 445. That's another option. We probably get it to 5-1 to one by the time it's thrown up. Tampa, the, uh, in the exclusive. Vancouver, and Boston. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind that. We could, we could do that. Tampa, Vancouver, and Boston. And then... Jake, could we throw in a little ride with Dusty as well today? I mean, it's the de it's the day before the deadline. Can we do that? Because I I, I, I want to let's go Kings and Preds in let's go Preds in regulation, Kings on the money line, and the Panthers puck line, and let's go that. Just make that one a ride with Dusty. I'll take the heat if that one fails, and then we got our lock shot partner parlay. That we can roll out there as well. Huss, recap the parlay one more time for the man. He's a busy boy. <laughs> Tampa money line yeah. at home versus the Flames. Vancouver money line at Vegas. Bruins money line at home against the Leafs. It's plus four forty five in. We're probably looking at around five to one by the time it hits the exclusives. Yeah, and then the other one will be Philly on the puck line, Kings money line, and Nashville in regulation. Would be the ride. Philly with or Panthers? Oh, Pan yeah, Panthers. Pan yeah, Panthers. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Panthers. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, sorry. That scared us a little bit there. <laughs> uh, Panthers? Yeah. King, mo Kings, Moneyline, Preds and Regulation? Preds and Reg, yeah. Do vice versa. Yeah. And that one's plus 515. All right, so there we go. Like both of them. And, of course, most of the picks we get, obviously, we like them individually if you can get the value on them as well. Huss, what's coming up at uh, Winnipeg Sports Talk today? Obviously, big show for you boys. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, Jets are hitting the ice actually in about 10 minutes in Seattle, so we'll get the latest from uh, them as we get closer to the deadline. Uh, Dave Pagnotta from the uh, fourth period is going to jump on and fill us in on uh, what he's hearing. Scott Billick from uh, the Winnipeg Sun as well with his thoughts on the Jets and the upcoming deadline, and then uh, a trip down with our friends at the Manitoba Sports Hall of Fame. So, uh, yeah, 10 minutes over at WST. Get, join us or uh, – Pop by after the fellas finish up the oil stream. Give us a sub over there. And uh, in the meantime, give a thumbs up for the lock shop today, folks. Everyone that's with us live on YouTube. Uh, all right. And uh, Jake, lots of exclusives locked and loaded again as well. EST Parley's already up. You guys have been busy today. Yeah, I've got some ready. Um, I have dogs probably going to put a bunch of those together for us here soon. Beauty. I want to shout out the chat. There was a few messages in there that we didn't get to. Um, I am I am under six feet. I know someone <laughs> sober Kirk. I think asked if I was how tall I was. I, I'm not very tall. Um, I also didn't make up the can't teach six five thing. I stole that from Twitter. Yeah. Um, and my internet, I guess, is very poor. I don't know if you guys are hearing me poorly. I'm hearing you guys fine, but I guess well, it's not Jake. I mean, as me. you know, your in, your your internet always sucks. It's. I think it just it's going to have to be a running thing, and we just live with what it is. I, I I'm closing tabs in the middle of the show, trying to get it. To like move a little quicker. I'm obviously I can't hear myself, so I sound fine coming out here. Um, but clearly, people there's just always like a little buffer. That. Like there, there's a buffer, like probably yeah. like yeah. once every ninety seconds with you or something. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, what we could try okay. is uh, to hear that. you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll that. You could maybe try to connect from your phone. I mean, that would work too. One time. That might be yeah. Smooth. If you get unlimited data, just yeah. come in. Or, right or if you can connect on the Wi-Fi on your phone in the apartment, um, because yeah, I bet you that could work too. Uh, something to try. Something to try. All right, boys, we will. Uh, yeah, we'll you. let you go. Uh, I'll take her home on a on a one shot here the rest of the way. Hush, you have a good show. Jake, fire me a text when those bad boys are up, and we'll obviously plug them on two guys and a goalie here today as well. Talk to you. Talk to you. To, yeah. I guess no lock shop Thanks, tomorrow because of deadline coverage uh, with both extended Winnipeg Sports Talk coverage over on WST channel and a longer edition of the Oil Stream here tomorrow. So lock shop. We will talk to you on Monday. See you guys then. Yeah, that being said. Oh. All right. Huss is passing along that they uh, will probably do a WST parlay. Uh, coming up. So Huss will have that for you. Follow along on that over at, uh, at CoolBet. Um, Penders Pancakes is in and says, you can dial up your, uh, you can upgrade from your dial up modern uh, modem too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. We got to get Jake's internet sorted out here. And at some point we will. Um, all right. JT the Shark says, from two guys on uh, Twitter, Sarah Volley and uh, Merrick, the Avs are 100% acquiring a goaltender all right this is interesting it's deadline time man this is absolutely awesome can't wait for uh can't wait for more of it the edmonton oilers have acquired troy stesher we're going to get into that coming up here on two guys and a goalie no salary retention on the deal the oilers bring in stetcher and a seventh in exchange for a fourth would have liked to have seen some retention on that one um, but they would still have they would still have enough, I guess. What was the number on... Uh, let me just check here. The number on Stetcher is 1.1. That leaves them about a million. So if they can if they can go and... Well, they could still always trade a player as well. You can move a Matias Yamark. You can do something like that. Um, but they would still have about a million dollars that they would be able to add prior to the deadline. And if you can get that 75% retained... Then you're looking at a $4 million player could still possibly come back if they wanted to uh, to go down 
that path. So that's something that we'll continue to get to. A bunch of NHL exclusives available over at Cool Bet. Uh, they will be posted up, coming up here in a little bit. The Edmonton Sports Talk parlay is already up. Like I mentioned, the EST parlay. Connor McDavid, two plus assist tonight. Henrik with a point in his Oilers debut. And the Oilers win in regulation. That is plus 550. And then the other two are already up as well. We got a nice little bump on these as well. The Lock Shop Partner parlay over exclusives page as well. Um, Tampa Bay Lightning, Vancouver Canucks, and Bruins all the win plus 525. And then my ride with Dusty tonight. The Preds to win in regulation. Panthers on the puck line and the Kings to win 6-1 to one tonight. Not too shabby there. All right, that is going to do it for the lock shop. we got two guys and a goalie coming up as well. Uh, Gager will be here. Uh, Cass will be joining us as well. We'll dive into the Stetcher deal. Is that going to be it for the Edmonton Oilers, or is there more coming down the pipe? They can afford a little bit more from a cap perspective. Can they afford more from an assets perspective? I think they possibly can as well, so we'll certainly go there. That's going to do it for the lock shop. If you're listening on iHeart or on TuneIn or at EdmontonSportsTalk.com, sit tight. We're going to give you the whale and wolf for uh, for a couple of minutes, and then there'll be two guys and a goalie coming up taking you through the lunch hour and breaking down the stature trade. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, make sure autoplay is on, and I'll take you right on over to two guys in the goalie. We should be firing up here momentarily. Thank you very much for joining us on the Lock Shop today. Best of luck tonight with your bets, and we will talk to you Monday on the Lock Shop.